So you've probably seen it in movies a hundred times, right? The intense interrogation scene where one cop is as mean as a junkyard dog and the other cop is as sweet as pie. That, my friends, is the good cop, bad cop routine. And no, it's not just for Hollywood. It's a real life negotiation strategy. And guess what? It's not just for cops and robbers. It's for you and me too. Let's get to it. Now let's break it down. Good cop, bad cop is all about contrast and pressure. One person plays hardball, making you feel like you're backed into a corner. That's your bad cop. Then when you're feeling all hope is lost, along comes the good cop with a lifeline, making you feel like they're on your side. It's a psychological seesaw and it can be super effective. But why does it work? Well, it's all about human psychology. We're wired to seek relief from pressure and gravitate towards those who offer us comfort. When the good cop steps in, we're naturally inclined to trust them and open up, giving them the information or agreement they want. Okay, let's paint a picture from the everyday life playbook. You're at your favorite coffee shop and there's this barista who's known for being a bit of a tough cookie, let's just say. You ask for a custom drink, maybe something off menu, and they give you a, well, the look, you know, the look. Like, that's gonna be a hassle. That's too much work. They start explaining to you, you know, how complicated it would be, how it's not part of the menu or the usual lineup. The price they quote is enough to make your wallet weep for a warm beverage. So just as you're about to sigh and order a plain old latte, Along comes the other barista, all smiles and sunshine. They jump in and say, hey, I've got a break coming up. I can whip up that special drink for you, no problem. And just like that, the price drops to something more palatable. You're left feeling like you've just been rescued from a caffeine catastrophe. That's good cop, bad cop. In the wild, my friends, served up with a shot of espresso and a dash of strategy. But it's not just for buying and selling. The tactic pops up in all sorts of places. Ever been in a job interview where one interviewer grills you with tough questions while the other smiles and nods? Or in a classroom where one teacher is super strict and the other one's laid back? Yep, you guessed it. Good cop, bad cop, yet again. Now you might be thinking, well, isn't that manipulative? Well, the truth is it can be, but it doesn't have to be. It's all about how you use it. Negotiation isn't a dirty word. It's a skill, and like any skill, it can be used for good or less good. So how can you use this tactic ethically and effectively? Well, first you've gotta understand that it's a dance. You're leading your partner through a series of steps and you've got to be in sync. If you're too aggressive as the bad cop, you'll step on their toes. Too soft as the good cop, and you'll trip over your own feet. Let's say you and your friends are trying to convince your group of friends to choose the beach for your next trip, instead of the mountains, which you usually go to. You start off by highlighting all of the potential downsides of a mountain trip, unpredictable weather, bugs, the works. That's your bad cop move. Then your friend jumps in, praising the endless sunshine and relaxation of the beach, offering the perfect solution. See, you're not lying or tricking anyone. You're just framing the conversation. But here's the secret sauce of the good cop, bad cop tactic. It's listening. Yes, you heard that right, listening. The best good cops out there, they're not just nodding along, they're listening like a pro at a jazz club, soaking in all the music. They tune in to the rhythm of the other person's needs, wants, and fears. You see, good cops are like the detectives of the human heart. They listen to the unsaid, they read between the lines, and they pay attention to body language. It's not just about waiting for their turn to speak. It's about understanding the melody of the other person's speech, the tempo of their gestures, the pauses, the sighs, the subtle shift in tone. They're looking for clues. And when they find those clues, they don't just throw out a lifeline, they throw the right one. 
They offer solutions that resonate, that make the other person think, yeah, this is exactly what I need. They're not just fixing the problem, they're mending a concern. They're not just offering a discount, they're providing value. Building rapport and trust is their superpower. They make you feel seen and heard, and honestly, that's a rare commodity in this world these days. They're not just playing a part, they're genuinely engaging with what's bugging you. And when someone feels that level of understanding, that's when walls come down and real negotiation begins. This is where the good cop shines. They're not just the nice one, they're the empathetic one, the one who gets you. And that's a powerful thing. It turns a standoff into a conversation, a demand into a dialogue. So when you're out there trying to get to yes, remember that the strongest tool in your belt isn't a sharp tongue, it's an open ear. So listen actively, engage sincerely, and respond with care. That's how you turn the good cop, bad cop routine from a tactic into an art form. Okay, and we haven't forgotten about the bad cop, so what about the bad cop? Well, they're not just there to be the villain. Oh, no, no, no. They set the stage for the good cop to come in and shine. They create the tension that the good cop releases. It's a one-two punch that can deliver results. Now let's talk about balance. You can't go all bad cop and expect to win people over. And you can't be all good cop and expect to get anywhere. You've gotta find that sweet spot where you're firm but fair challenging but supportive. Think back to a time when you've been in a tough spot and someone came to your rescue. How did that make you feel? Grateful? Relieved? That's the power of the good cop. And remember the person who put you in that tough spot? They made you appreciate the rescue even more. That's the bad cop at work. But let's not forget, this is a team effort. Good cop, bad cop only works when there's trust and communication between the players. You've gotta be on the same page or the whole thing falls apart. So how do you master this tactic? Practice, observation, and a little bit of empathy. Watch how people react to different approaches. Put yourself in their shoes. What would make you crack? What would make you feel at ease? And remember, timing is everything. The bad cop creates the pressure, but you can't let it build up too much. You've gotta know when to bring in the good cop to release the valve. It's like baking, you leave it in too long and it burns. Take it out too soon and it's doughy. Now let's flip the script. What if you're on the receiving end of good cop, bad cop? First, recognize what's happening. Once you see the game, you can play it. Stay calm and don't let the bad cop rattle you. And then when the good cop comes in, engage with them, but keep your cards close to your chest. Negotiation is a two-way street after all. But here's the thing, good cop, Bad cop isn't the only game in town. There are tons of negotiation strategies out there. This one's just got a bit of Hollywood flair to it. And like any strategy, it's not foolproof. Some people see right through it and others just don't respond to it. So why am I telling you all this? Because whether you're negotiating a curfew, a raise, or just what movie to watch on a Friday night, these skills truly matter. Life is full of negotiations big and small, and the better you are at navigating them, the better you'll do in life and in business. And let's not forget the fun factor. There's a certain thrill to playing the game, to strategizing and outmaneuvering. It's like a chess match. And when you play it right, it can be incredibly satisfying. But always, always remember, with great power comes great responsibility. So use these tactics to create win-win situations, not to take advantage of others. That's the mark of a true negotiation ninja. Before you click away, let me ask you this. If you're ready to sharpen your career skills or enrich your social interactions, I'm here with some practical insights that could open new doors for you. It's our immersive, intimate group coaching program. Think of it as your personal think tank, where you get tailored advice that fits you just right. It's a space where your career questions and social fluency inquiries meet their answers, and where you can find meaningful connections with people who are leveling up like you. So if that sounds interesting, then you can sign up and go to academy.exploring.co and you can join the Executive Communication Lab group coaching plan. And then we have, of course, our amazing community, our vibrant international, incredible community. 
for a self-guided yet fully supported journey, the Exploring Academy plan is your gateway. It's not just your average network. It's more like the family you choose for your professional life. A place where you can swap stories, share wins, and maybe even find your next big opportunity. It's all about connecting with people who get it because they're right there with you. Dive in, the water's fine. So for that, you can go to academy.exploring.co and you can choose the Exploring Academy plan. And in both plans, for those of you who like to get a good stretch goal, we've got the 33-Day Executive Excellence Challenge. It's not about transforming you overnight. That's not how excellence works. It's about small, daily, incremental steps that add up to big leaps in how you lead and how you succeed. If that sounds like your kind of challenge, then you can get started as soon as you sign up and that's available to you straight away as soon as you sign up for either paid plan, the Exploring Academy plan and the Executive Communication Lab group coaching plan. So if you're ready to take things further, I'm right here with you. Let's make it happen. Check out the links in the description or just hop on over to academy.exploring.co and go see for yourself. I'll see you there. And I really encourage you to go out there and give this good cop, bad cop negotiation tactic a try. Start small, maybe with something low stakes, like who gets the last slice of pizza? And you know, see what works and what doesn't. And most importantly, have fun with it. Because at the end of the day, if you're not enjoying the dance, what's the point? And that, my friends, is the good cop, bad cop negotiation tactic. So use it wisely, use it well. And who knows, you might just find yourself getting what you want more often than not. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.